All right, problem number 72 on the CP practice final exam and problem number 70 on the honors final practice exam ask you to predict the products of this reaction. Now, these are the same reactants as we had in the previous problem, number 71, but now we're going to predict the products. We said in the last problem in number 71 that we this is clearly a double replacement reaction and an acid-base reaction. That's important that you do that first before you try to predict the products. Predicting the products will help you figure out what kind of products, uh, I'm sorry, knowing what kind of reaction it is will help you figure out how the products are going to arrange themselves on the other side of the equation. So we can see this is a sulfite ion. If you're in CP class, you'll look that up on the common ions list. If you're in an honors class, you're supposed to have memorized the polyatomic ions, uh, or many of them, including sulfite. And then the same is true for this hydroxide ion. You can look it up in CP. You're supposed to have memorized it in honors. So this is a double replacement reaction. The front part of the front chemical goes with the back part of the second. And the front part of the front back chemical goes with the front back part of the second. So let's rewrite this down here. H2SO4. We're going to figure out its physical state here in a minute, so I'm going to leave a little space. Then barium hydroxide. Leave a little space. And the front part of this goes with the back part of this. Now here's where it's important to remember subscripts like this do not travel unless they're part of a polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ion. By traveling, I mean moving from this side of the equation automatically to this side. So since this 2 is not part of a polyatomic ion, it's just telling me I have two hydrogens attached to this sulfur. I'm sorry, it should be sulfite, not sulfate, so it's SO3. I have two hydrogens attached to this sulfite. Um, we don't carry this number 2 here, nor do we carry this number 2 here. Anytime there's a 2 outside the parentheses, that's very clearly not going to be carried automatically. So the H goes with the OH, and I hope you recognize now that that's water. We can already assign that then a liquid physical state since we have an acid-base reaction. Water is considered liquid as a product in an acid-base reaction, but gas in a combustion reaction. So we have HOH. Now the front part of this goes with the back part of this. You need to remember front parts always remain front parts. So when we write this, we write BA and SO3. The front part remains in the front. Now we need to know what the oxidation numbers are, or charge numbers are for these two um, species, the barium and the sulfate. And we look and find barium is right here on the periodic table. If you are in an honors chemistry class, you should know that every element in column 2, okay, column 2, has a 2 plus charge. And you should have memorized the sulfide ion and know that it has a 2 negative charge. If you're not in an honors class, if you're in a CP class, then you're going to look up the charge on the, I mean, so you're going to, um, yeah, if you're in the CP class, you're going to look up on the periodic table of the oxidation numbers the charge on the barium, and you'll see that barium has where are we, 2 plus charge, and then you're going to look on the common ions list at the sulfite. Sulfite is right here. You're going to know it has a 2 negative charge, okay? Now, if you're waiting for me to show you this on camera, you're not helping yourself very much. You should be looking up this stuff as I look it up. The more you practice going to the places you need to find these answers, the more equipped, the better equipped you're going to be to look for those answers when, the, when it comes time to do that on the test. If all you're doing is watching me do this stuff instead of doing it for yourself, trying to work ahead, the more you're planning on failure on the test. Passive learning, that's, what called, that's what's called passive learning when you just watch somebody do it. Passive learning is not nearly an effect, as effective a learning technique as active learning. So going and doing it for yourself is far more active and far, far more effective. So we have a 2 plus charge and a 2 negative charge. That then balances out those two charges, and then this is going to be um, balanced out. Okay, we're not going to, we, we, we have uh, one of these and one of these in this balanced formula. We need to know if sulfite, this barium sulfite, is going to be solid or aqueous. Now, if you're in a CP class, you can look it up on the solubility rule. And so we find that uh, sulfites, are not listed. Hydroxide, sulfides. Okay. How about that? All right, so we really don't know. So I wouldn't count that for you or against you. That's fine. Sulfites are mostly insoluble. I'm surprised on this.
solubility rule that it's not listed there, but uh, it doesn't. This is going to be a multiple choice question anyway, so it wouldn't matter that much. Um, but this is would actually end up being a solid. All right, you wouldn't know that. Wouldn't be held against you. It's not going to be on a question on the test that you have to answer. Now we're ready to go to the next question about balancing the equation. If that's what you need to do.